Hello, I'm so glad you're, you're able to tune in with us and to study God's Word. And I pray that His Word will be fulfilled in your life as you pursue Him with all of your hearts. You know, I get so blessed and encouraged uh, to read or to hear about people who are being used by God and that they're using their gifts and talents to reach this generation and to uh, really radically transform uh, people's lives. And uh, there's a pastor that I, I greatly admire and that uh, I was able to be under his teaching for many years. And he was writing about how he had just spoken at a retreat. And as he came back, uh, people were writing testimonies of how uh, the retreat affected them. And uh, one student wrote back and, and told him that now that when he's at home, uh, where his parents were threatening to divorce and that uh, they were always fighting and bringing him into the middle of it. And he always felt uh, very lost and he felt like he was being defeated. Uh, but now he said that through this retreat and through the Word of God, uh, he now has strength and that he no longer sees this as a, a defeat in battle, but he's encouraged to pray and to uh, live his life for Christ. And so I see how God is using this pastor to really reach so many people. And uh, it's great to see when people who are on mission for God and really fulfilling that in their lives. And we'll see that also in the life of Christ as he's on a mission and we'll see what he's all about in today's passage. Luke chapter 4, verses 31 through 44. Then he went down to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and on the Sabbath began to teach the people. They were amazed at his teaching because his message had authority. In the synagogue, there was a man possessed by a demon, an evil spirit. He cried out at the top of his voice, Ha! What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus said sternly. Come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down before them all and came out without injuring him. All the people were amazed and said to each other, What is this teaching? With authority and power he gives orders to evil spirits and they come out. And the news about him spread throughout the surrounding area. Jesus left the synagogue and went to the home of Simon. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked Jesus to help her. So he bent over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. She got up at once and began to wait on them. When the sun was setting, the people brought to Jesus all who had various kinds of sickness, and laying his hands on each one, he healed them. Moreover, demons came out of many people, shouting, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them, and would not allow them to speak, because they knew he was the Christ. At daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place. The people were looking for him, and when they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also, because that is why I was sent. And he kept on preaching in the synagogues of Judea. And so Luke 4 describes for us uh, Jesus and his uh, beginnings of ministry. And so as he starts off, we see, and it's, um, it's important to note that his love for people. And we know that uh, as you've been following along in, in this chapter, you see that how he received his calling, how he's pronounced, and that he's on mission for God. And so now he's pursuing it. Now he's living it out. And it's to proclaim good news, to help the poor, and to help the oppressed be set free. And so uh, we see here that uh, he shared these things in his hometown, and he basically gets laughed at, and he's driven out. And so now we find him at his next destination, and there uh, we see uh, that he's planted his feet, and now he's getting started. And so we find him teaching in the synagogues, and people are amazed by his teaching, and that they are drawn uh, to God through his words. And there, uh, he encounters a man who's possessed by a demon. 
And as soon as he sees him, he just says one word and the demon flees. Uh, now, I don't know if you've ever met a possessed person, but I remember uh, the encounters that I had. Um, I had a student who was oppressed by a, a demon, and so when we were praying for him, it took us hours uh, before he was set free and before he returned back to normal. And so it's amazing how Jesus is able to, to do all these things in front of the eyes of people, and he does it so easily, and that uh, the demons are are truthful. They cannot lie to him because uh, he is the Son of Man. He is the Son of God. And so uh, here we see him going to the synagogues, casting out demons, and then it says later on that he heals uh, Simon's mother-in-law. And the people who are sick and possessed are brought to him, and he heals all of them. And so you see uh, the love that Jesus had for these people and that he's on mission for God and that he is doing what he's been called to do. And you know, I'll never forget uh, a statement and advice that I got from an older brother while I was in college. And as I was sharing with him that uh, I felt that God was leading me to ministry, uh, he gave me this important advice. And he said, uh, he said that people don't care what you know until they know that you care. And he said, Mike, don't ever forget this because this will, you will see this um, as you do ministry. And I found this to be true, that uh, if you want to do ministry well, you need to really uh, care for His people and that when they know that they're being cared for, uh, they will listen to you. And so uh, we see Jesus caring for the sick and really doing uh, what God has placed for Him. And so that's the kind of life that He's doing, uh, is to proclaim the good news. But not only is, do we see His love for people, but we also see His love for God. And that's one of the things that I just want to point out. It's a, it's a small bit here, but it says that as He's busy doing all these things, and the list goes on and on, and then all of a sudden we see Jesus going off by Himself into a solitary place and communing with the Father. And try imagining that. Picture Jesus uh, just going away from the, the crowd. You know, maybe he was being introverted at the time and just needed time for himself. No, but he used his time to be with his father uh, because that is what was most important to him. And that's where he received his calling. And it's really fascinating that whenever you see uh, Jesus in the middle and doing great ministry work, you always see him also uh, that people would always note that he takes time away uh, to pray and to be with God. And so some people uh, have said that uh, because so much power has gone out of him, that he needs to receive uh, from the Father. So I don't know if that's true, uh, but we see um, that his prayer life was very important to him. And so it's been said that you know a prayerless person is a powerless person. And I believe that that's so true, that if we want to be used by the Lord uh, to reach this generation and to reach this world, uh, we need a people uh, to, who are committing our lives to God. And that as we pray, as we seek Him, I really believe that God will show and reveal good and greater things uh, before us. And so we see that Jesus could not fulfill His mission uh, until he prayed, unless he heard from God. And as he listened and he spent time with him, uh, he was able to complete the things that God has told him. And so, uh, as we see this evidence of prayer in his, in his life, how much more should we, as children of God, that we need to be a people who pray and to seek God with all of our hearts. And so, because of what Jesus received from God, he was able to deliver to his people. And so the same goes for us that we cannot give unless we have received from God himself. You know, it's very easy for us to grow tired and weary if we're constantly giving but we're not receiving. And I believe that that's so true especially in ministry, uh, whether you're a lay leader or if you're a pastor or if you're working for the church, if you're always giving, but if you don't take the time to hear and to listen and to lay down your requests before God, uh, we will find ourselves 
uh, quickly burning out. And so let's learn from this lesson as we see Jesus, uh, no matter how busy he was, no matter uh, what things he was involved in, he always took the time uh, to be with God and he treasured it. And it's been said that if you don't schedule it, uh, someone else will schedule it for you. And so let's learn to set blocks of time uh, to be with God and to guard it and that have nothing else come between you and the Father because you see that as important quality time with the Lord. Uh, so can we pray and ask God to speak to us and to have that quality time with Him? Uh, Father, we are so grateful for the example of Your Son. And we want to be a people that will commit our ways to uh, make 2017 a year of breakthrough, a year where we will see many answered prayers. And so, God, as we uh, give these things to you, that we're not just simply just asking of you, but we want to see uh, more of you. We want to see how uh, you want to use us, uh, God, to expand your kingdom. And so, make, help us to make ourselves available. Help us, Lord, to listen to your voice, to listen to the things that you're calling us and the things that you want us to do. And so we just uh, devote ourselves to you. May we always keep our eyes on the prize. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This program is a great pleasure to be able to do this program.